Okay, in this video, I'm gonna go over 10 things that you're doing in the gym that is hindering your progress. Just like my previous video, where I talked about things that you're doing outside of the gym that is hindering your muscle building or fat loss progress. These are specifically things that you're doing in the gym that are really putting you on the back foot. So let me get into it. First of all is ego lifting. You go in there, you see Sam Sulik, he's throwing around five plates and you're like, let me try that. But really, you haven't even established a proper mind-muscle connection or good form. What you think is heavy and what you think are hard reps are not doing anything for you because you have not learned about how to perform exercises correctly. If your muscles don't even know that they're being worked, do you think you're going to grow? I remember I used to just try full stack everything and basically it would be like my central nervous system is working, nothing else. So make sure, especially if you're a beginner, you start light with a weight that you can control but it's still hard and you get the form basics down. Slow eccentric, deep painful stretch and big squeeze. And then once you've established proper form, a good mind muscle connection, you can start pushing your limits and increasing the weight. Next, the opposite is true. Going too light because you're a mind muscle connection bro. Stop trying to feel the squeeze all the time and not actually push yourself and lift a challenging weight. The key is to perform hard reps that you can control, that you get a pump, but it still feels like a really solid workout. So balancing a challenging weight, which you fail within eight to 12 reps, for example, with solid, solid form is what you need to aim for. If you go too far on either side of the spectrum, that's not going to be optimal. If you go too heavy to the point where your form breaks down, if you go too light, just so that you're feeling a squeeze, that's not really doing anything. I can get a squeeze by just going like this or like this or tensing. So you need to find that middle ground. That's where muscle growth occurs when you push yourself with the weight whilst controlling it. Next is understanding range of motion. So many of you will think that you're doing an exercise properly, but you're not taking the muscle group which you're targeting through a full range of motion. What I mean by this is, say you're doing a calf raise. A lot of people I see will just bounce up and down, but that's not a full range of motion and that's not going to do anything for muscle growth. So you have to be getting a maximal stretch, whether that's a lat pull down or a chest fly. And then you have to bring it all the way up to a, a big squeeze where you feel your muscles contracting. Also understanding where a range of motion ends is important. For example, if you're doing a reverse pec deck, you don't need to go all the way back. Otherwise that's just gonna incorporate your traps. As long as you're getting that rear delt contraction, that's as far as you go, which is typically like 90 degrees. So also understanding ranges of motion is very, very helpful. Next is our wrist traps. For my pull downs, for my RDLs, anything that requires grip strength, these have been a huge help. If you are trying to grow your back, your hamstrings, anything that requires requires you to grip onto something, you can't be having your forearms gas out too quick. Otherwise, you're not training your lats or your hamstrings till failure. You're training your forearms till failure. So that's not gonna be optimal for muscle growth. And if you don't care about growing your forearms, go ahead and buy yourself some wrist straps. Make sure that straps are tightly, tightly wrapped around your wrists and make sure you use them every time you do pull downs or rows or RDLs. Next is adding redundancies in your training. So for example, if I'm doing a lat pull down on my back day and then I go onto an assisted pull up machine, what am I doing? That doesn't make any sense. You're basically doing the same exercise twice. So you have to understand biomechanics. But basically, if it looks like the same exercise, it's probably redundant. If it looks like you're pulling in the same way or pushing the same way, it's going to be redundant. If you're doing a flat press, then you're doing another flat press and that's redundant. You want to make sure each line of push or each line of pull is different to your previous exercise. Focus on exercise selection, okay? That's very, very important for muscle growth. Choosing each exercise very carefully so that it recruits different muscle fibers so that you're maximizing workout efficiency and effectiveness. Next is is as much as I advocate for switching up the exercises you do, this doesn't mean every week. This means maybe once every six weeks. You have to get consistently stronger on the same exercises week by week to actually see progress. If I'm doing a lat pull down for my back, I want to stick with a lat pull down for at least six weeks before I move on to an assisted pull up machine so that I can get stronger on the lat pull down and extract every bit of muscle growth from that one movement. If you're switching it up all the time, this is going to hinder neurological adaptation. But if you consistently do the same exercise for six weeks, this is going to allow for better neurological adaptations, better mind muscle connections, and better growth over time. So make sure you periodize your training. You stick with the same exercises for four to six weeks before you think of changing them. Because if you change them too frequently, this can also limit progressive overload because you're getting stronger on one. And then the next week you just go do a different one. That's not really linear. That's not really the best way of tracking and getting stronger and making sure you're doing everything you can to build muscle. It's just a bit messy. So keep staple exercises in your training split for at least four to six weeks to make sure you see consistent strength gains and muscle gains as a result. Next is rest time. A lot of people take too long to rest or too little stress. This is bodybuilding. You need to be catching your breath, waiting for your heart rate to go down before you enter your next set. There is no specific time, right? Never trust anyone who says only rest one and a half minutes or two minutes. If I do a set of Smith squats or hack squats, you think I'm going to be ready a minute later? Of course not. I'm going to need like a four, five, six minute break between sets. But as soon as you feel ready to get into the next set, 
that's when you should go. That's a good ballpark. You feel energized, you feel hyped, your heart rate's gone back down, go into it. There's no need to wait any longer than that. But if you're panting still, you still feel like dead from that set of squats, wait, okay? Wait till you get your energy back, your breath back until you go back in. But don't be resting like 20, 30 seconds or even a minute. That's kind of too short. You want to be maintaining intensity. You want to be maintaining strength throughout your workout. And if you don't rest enough between sets, you're going to fatigue quickly. You're going to be much, much weaker on every consecutive set. And that's just not going to be optimal for recovery or muscle growth because you're not hitting the reps or the weight that you're capable of. Next is avoiding exercises that do not fit or do not mesh well with your anatomy. Everyone is built different. Some people are torso dominant. Some people are leg dominant. Some people have lower back problems. Some people have long arms. Some people have short legs. You know, everyone is different. And if exercises don't feel good for you, they're painful, uncomfortable, or you don't even feel your muscles working, then it's not the right exercise for you. Just because your favorite influencer or favorite bodybuilder is doing it and you do it and it feels like shit, then you shouldn't do it. So find the exercises that feels like a workout. So you really struggle, but you also get a good mind-muscle connection. You get a good burn, you get a good pump. So for example, if a regular barbell squat doesn't work for you, like it doesn't work with many people's leverages, try a hack squat. It will change your life. If you don't enjoy your workouts, you're not going to stay consistent. So you have to be doing the exercises which you enjoy and the exercises which you enjoy are going to be the ones that feel the most comfortable and get you the best pumps and allow you to get stronger on. Next is progressive overload. Now people mistake progressive overload for just throwing more weight on week by week and sacrificing your form. No, true progressive overload is keeping the same exact form, a slow eccentric, a deep stretch, a big squeeze with heavier weights or with more reps. You should never sacrifice your form just to get stronger, just to do more reps. Otherwise, you might as well just lower the weight or lower the reps and do them properly like you were doing. So make sure you progressively overload. Of course, it's probably the most important thing for muscle growth. But if your each rep doesn't look exactly how it used to look when you were doing a lighter weight or less reps, then you're not ready for that weight or that amount of reps. But if you maintain proper form and the rep which you did with 60 kilos looks exactly like the reps you did with 70 kilos, that's a great sign. And you're going to grow from that. Each week, increase the weight by one or two pounds, maybe, or one or two reps. And finally is overthinking. A lot of us want to, in this digital age of how to optimize everything, workouts, routines, morning routines, biohacking, supplements, you know, all these meticulous optimal bros who try to like perfect everything, that's going to drive you insane. It's really just a one big marketing gimmick, all this overcomplication of every industry to instill fear in you, to instill the sense of, oh, I'm doing this wrong. This guy knows the secrets. I'm going to buy his stuff. No, they're trying to make you overthink when in reality, all you need is to be consistent, train to failure intensely and gradually get stronger rather than analyzing every single exercise detail. Am I doing this right? Am I eating that? Am I taking that supplement? That right there, what I just told you, consistency, intensity, and gradual improvement in form, in weight is the bread and butter is 80 90 percent of the total gains you'll see so stop overthinking stop overcomplicating. stop watching 20,000 videos on youtube and just go to the gym train hard and get stronger with good form so thank you for watching make sure to check out barbell apparel and go grab yourself free training programs and free nutrition plans link in the description as well hope this helps and i'll see you in the next video peace